More than 24 hours have passed since Turkey and Syria were rocked by multiple earthquakes. More than 5,000 people have died in both countries. The toll will be eight times that number, says the WHO. Now, there have been around 3,400 deaths in Turkey and 1,600 deaths in Syria. But that number is increasing by the minute as people are pulled out from under the rubble. It's a race against time to rescue survivors from that rubble. It's been more than 24 hours that they have been under the rubble. So it's a race against time is all we can say. To make matters worse, the weather is far from ideal in both countries. Temperatures have dropped both in Syria and in Turkey, and there have been reports of snowfall and rainfall in border areas. This adverse weather is making it very hard to carry out rescue efforts. More than 24,000 personnel, as we speak, are on the ground, shifting through the rubble. Many more are arriving from foreign countries. In fact, India too has sent two NDRF rescue teams, along with trained dogs, medical equipment, and a team of doctors. Before moving on, let me give you a quick recap of what happened in the last 24 hours. The first earthquake struck Turkey's provincial capital of Gaziantep. It was a 7.8 magnitude quake. Buildings and houses came down like a pack of cards in the early hours of Monday. The sleeping residents had absolutely no chance of escaping. The second quake hit hours later. It was a 7.5 magnitude tremor, which hit around 10.30 GMT, which is 1.30 PM local time. Now, it's important to note that this second tremor was not an aftershock. It was a separate earthquake which hit the same region just as rescue and search operations were getting underway. Let me give you a sense of just how powerful these earthquakes were. Shocks were felt in Cairo, which is 90 kilometers away from the Syrian border. Even Greenland, which is more than 5,000 kilometers away, reported shocks. Now let me tell you about the science. What explains this wave of tremors or quakes in such a short period of time? Remember, there have been at least five. Now, according to some reports, Turkey has logged 41 tremors in the last 24 hours. 41 tremors. Some of these were separate earthquakes, while some were aftershocks. The reason for these tremors is Turkey's location. The country is situated over a seismically active zone called the Antolia Tectonic Block. This block is flanked by three plates the African, the Eurasian, and the Arabian plates. When these plates interact or rub against each other, tremors are felt. Having said that, such interactions have been rare. The Antolia block has reported only three quakes over magnitude 6 since 1970. That's three major earthquakes in 50 years. Not bad. If you look at the Himalayas, if you look at the Himalayan tectonic plate, the situation is much, much worse. Earthquakes are more frequent and often stronger in our neighborhood. Just two weeks ago, Nepal was rocked by a 5.8 magnitude earthquake. In fact, experts have long been predicting a major quake in the Himalayas, perhaps more than seven or eight on the Richter scale. The problem is we don't know when or where this earthquake will strike. That's the thing about earthquakes. There is no exact science to predict when an earthquake will hit. The current technology can at best give you a couple of seconds. If you live in a, say, a 20 floor building, those few seconds, will they help? Not really. So what's the solution? To build earthquake proof buildings. Japan has been doing it for many, many decades now. But if you look at countries like India and Turkey, no such effort has been made. In Turkey, some of the affected buildings are almost a century old. They have been built using cheap material and the result is on your screens. There are buildings we have seen collapse like a pack of cards. Just come down. So while we mourn the victims of Turkey and Syria, it's also important to learn our lessons here. If you build tall and unsafe buildings in seismic zones, you're inviting disaster. Here in India, around 59% of the total landmass is prone to earthquakes. The government of India divides regions into different seismic zones. Zone 5 is considered to be the most vulnerable. Around 11% of India's landmass is classified as Zone 5, while 18% is in Zone 4. 
Delhi, for example, is located over three seismic fault lines, while Gurugram is located over seven. The question is, how prepared are Indian cities?